It's Harry out of California and into Africa. But what's the true story behind this also not so secret visit? Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here in the very heart of London, Kensington Palace again today, beautiful day, already murky, but we're having trouble if you're in London or coming to London because we're still plagued by all of those strikes. So if you are planning to travel around this wonderful capital city, there are no buses, there are no tubes, and uh, the only thing you've got is your legs. Back as ever though, tea breaking roll story of the day. A lot of people really were stunned by these pictures that recently popped up of, of course, the former well known as Prince Harry, uh, popping up in Mozambique in Africa. What was it all about? Why suddenly uh, did they decide to release this out to the media? Well, it's quite simple when you think about it. It all truly centers on this. Oh, that's right. This particular book, the onslaught, the negativity that's gone on regarding that book by Tom Bauer has been, well, you know, universal worldwide. Uh, whatever they thought it might do has really done a lot worse. And the real reason for this is because you know Mr Barr has done an incredibly diligent job in finding people that are will, willing to speak and tell their version of events. Now of course what happens with celebrities and as we've often said here on the show that's what Harry and Meghan are now are just minor celebrities. You know they've got to fight back and the way to fight back is counteracted it with positive PR or so they think. Now this particular trip we're not quite sure exactly how it was funded as yet I will find out for you but what I do find fascinating is with all the hullabaloo about security over here in the United Kingdom. He was able to go through Johannesburg and uh, various other continents and countries, uh, all without sort of fuss and minimal security. These pictures, we're not quite sure if they were papally set up or indeed put out by some sort of agency. They're very clear, so I would suspect, as ever, I have to say allegedly, that there was a deal uh, broker to make sure that we, the public, got to see the good works that Prince Harry's doing. I'm not knocking what he's doing out there. It just seems odd, doesn't it, that these two people that claim the wanted to step back from royal life, from all the typical protocol, everything associated with this particular life, and now trying to create an alternative life doing exactly the same thing. But moving forward, where does this leave Prince Harry? Well, the reason why he's gone alone is because they believe, his PR team at least, that by operating separately, this is double whammy, double the spreads, double the sort of magazine covers, all of that sort of stuff, putting them in positive light, you know? And as ever, once again, isn't it ironic? And uh, some might say just, well, also strange that on the day Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, also released a very powerful incentive regarding her tennis tour tournament uh, with Roger Federer that these pictures dropped at the same time. Now, you know, it is a battle, as I've often said here on the show, between uh, the royal family, you know, but normally they coordinate their diaries so they don't overlap and each other gets their fair share of positive media. That's exactly how it operates. Harry and Meghan, of course, have gone rogue. They can do exactly what they want. They're not uh, akin to the British monarchy anymore. But what seemingly does uh, really irk them is that they definitely want that massive publicity, the publicity that they claim they didn't want. Now, we're told that this particular incentive could be related to Travelist, that's the company that uh, Prince Harry starred in that very ill-advised alleged comical ad about. But so far, really, what we do know is this. He's gone along there with a camera crew and this could form part of his docu-series, otherwise known to you and me as a reality TV series. Now, I'm not quite sure, but so far what we're going to be seeing is a bit of booing outside St Paul's Cathedral, some bits in Africa, and maybe some bits when they come back to the UK next month with their charities that are very close to their heart. I'm not quite seeing this as the Kardashians or you as a big tuning every week. It doesn't matter on what streaming service you put it, you have to make it exciting. And seeing very rich people patronising people in lesser, well, shall we say, uh, countries who do need money and do need support doesn't always really resonate with the viewing public. More so when you have to pay for it. As ever, when I know more, you'll know more. Neil Shaw in the very heart of London.